this is our first Ask Anything uh, AMA with the Chief of Police, Chief Michael Moore. Um, we asked for your questions yesterday, got a lot of great ones here, got a ton of them actually, so we'll get to as many as we can right now, uh, and we'll try and do this on a regular basis. So this is a chance really for everybody in Los Angeles to get a chance to ask you a question here and ask what's on their mind, and especially where people are at home right now, they've got a lot on their minds. We, we used all of the different social media platforms that we have out there to call these questions. Okay. So first one comes in uh, from uh, Steve Sanchez, 39. This is a big one that I know that everybody's concerned about. Do you think lockdowns are, are planned here for the county of Los Angeles? Uh, I think it's probably an eventuality. Uh, what we have on this whole model is to look at the experiences that are happening here in this, uh, in this state and regionally as well as across the country and now across the world. If you look at what happened uh, with this virus started in China and then as it moved to Italy and Germany and Europe and, and then across the sea and began here uh, in the United States, Seattle, uh, San Francisco, we're a little behind the curve on that. Uh, so we're, we're enjoying the opportunity to see how is this virus manifesting itself in communities around, uh, around similar type scenarios. This virus doesn't know a nationality, it doesn't know an ethnicity, it doesn't know a gender, it, it, uh, it's infecting all of us. Now, what we're learning by this opportunity of this lag time is what are some efforts to flatten the curve? And what we're seeing is efforts to isolate, social distance, restrict uh, access to restaurants, uh, dining in, large social gatherings, uh, gyms, uh, you know, all the, the list, if you will. The whole effort there is to how do we keep us away from each other and when one of us may have this virus because it's, it's believed to be a very contagious or you know, demonstrated to be a very contagious agent. And some strategies, one of the eventual strategies that we see across the world is this total lockdown where people, except for essential functions like picking up food and fuel and, and other really vital matters, they're just staying home. Right now, most of Los Angeles is staying home. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have some, of the, uh, some aspects of that, you know, everyone being asked to stay home already. Whether we'll get to a total one, uh, where a total one would actually include you know, no access to stores, no access to essential food supplies, I don't think we'll get there. Uh, but I do think that we could see some further uh, restrictions. Uh, the mayor said just today that we're on the 30-yard line on that. Mm -hmm. And whether he moves to the goal line on that you know, right away or if it takes us uh, a day, a week, uh, two weeks, a month, uh, really is looking to our L.A. County health officials as they're monitoring the instances of, of this virus to understand uh, whether that lever is needed right now. Okay. Um, I have uh, Kathy XX uh, who asks, what resources are in place for the families of police officers who contract the coronavirus on the job? Well, we're asking, as every, every other Angelino, that if a person is impacted by, by this virus, uh, they're infected by this virus, to isolate themselves, to keep some distance from their family members and, and others that are in their, in their social network, if you will. The fortunate thing about this virus is, as, as far as what we hear from the health officials, is that a person can isolate by simply being in a, in a room, a bedroom, or an area of their home. They don't have to create a quarantine where they have an entire uh, home to, to themselves and no one can can, can be anywhere in that home. Uh, this is uh, the nature of this virus is is such that people can coexist in a home safely. Now that doesn't mean that uh, one of our people we, we now have an officer that was a supervisor that was impacted by this virus. Uh, and we've had others that we've isolated or had to go home and, and ask them to to isolate themselves while we pen test on whether or not they were exposed to this virus. Uh, I'm, it's in terribly inconvenient, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but the safety of everyone really depends on, and the safety of that family is, exercise some good distance, uh, ensure that if you are asked to quarantine or, or isolate yourself that you do so. Uh, but then again, uh, there's means of which to communicate. Uh, it's, not a, uh, it's not like radioactivity. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that, that, that we think practically can occur uh, with our officers' families as, as all, of Angel all of us in Los Angeles are recognizing this could be something that, uh, how would it impact us if we had to do that? And our officer's doing well. He's recovered almost fully, well, right? No, or he's, close to well, he, he was doing well, and he's, he's having some setbacks with this. He's still recovering from mm -hmm. this, and he's still getting medical treatment. Okay. Um, 
There are rumors that the, the department might be transitioning to, in our business, we know as AB watches, which would keep the officers on all the time. Uh, and this comes in from CSP Los Angeles. Uh, is that true? Are we going to change the way in which we deploy our resources right now? Uh, we could. Uh, this department looks at the way it deploys resources uh, every few hours. The, the ebb and flow of workload in the organization means that we have to flex and we have to change our profile and, and assignment of resources to most essential functions and prioritize. We prioritize we get more than 4 million calls for service, uh, 911 services each year, and we prioritize the response to those so that the most important ones we get to the quickest, and the more routine matters take us more time. This workload brought on by this virus and its impact on how our society goes about its day to day, as well as how its impact may be on our workforce, uh, we're looking at, just as we look at uh, other workload, how might we have to change? And as you said, in our organization, we have mechanisms or levers to amplify our deployment. And that includes what's called an AB watch, where the ultimate deployment is we cancel all days off. There are no vacations. Employees, all 13,000, are required to come to work uh, every day, and we put them on 12-hour shifts. And that allows us to more than double our normal deployment and really demonstrate uh, an added sense of safety, but also presence in our community. Now, what happens if we were to lose half of our workforce to this virus? Well, then we would go to such a plan and we would then deploy about what we have right now. So there is a, there's an elasticity in it, there's a capacity in there, and people, uh, they worry about where this stuff goes because they know the model exists, and I just tell Angelinos as they're telling our rank and file, uh, we'll take this in a thoughtful, you know, reflective manner, and as the demands are created, we'll deal with it. That's good. Um, and I, I, one more here, this is from Don Julio, 1977. Um, and this came from the governor last night, too. Is the National Guard being deployed? How does that work when, when there's right. mention of martial law? Well, first of all, the deployment of the National Guard and, and martial law are two entirely separate things. The National Guard are Americans. They're members in our community. Some of them are, may be listening to this podcast, and they may have even been alerted that, that they need to uh, be on standby or that they may be considered. We're working within the national framework of which the military, the National Guard, are both components that can help and assist, uh, restore order, provide security, provide needed uh, necessary logistical matters for a community to operate in times of disaster, man-made or otherwise. In this instance, the National Guard is similarly available, and there could be uh, circumstances that we've seen in other parts of the world that would necessitate or would their, their use would be of value. What, the, what all of our community needs to rec I'd ask them to recognize is, these are just other Angelinos. These are other people in our community that wear a different uniform than an LA police officer or a firefighter, but they're there for their safety, and they're there to ensure that, that access to critical essential functions such as hospitals and, and food stores and so forth are there. But there are no plans right now for us to, to use those resources. I, I don't see that need. If there is such a need, w certainly the public will be made aware of it and will also be made aware of what the controls are and what the expectations as to the conduct of the National Guard uh, just as, as, uh, as police officers and firefighters. Um, this comes from Cali Blue 562. Um, what about the ICE, uh, the potential of, of ICE doing enforcement, of uh, immigration enforcement in the midst of this pandemic? Do we have any information about that? That's not our lane. Of course, we, we do not enforce civil administrative law. What have you heard about that? And what advice would you give to our immigrant community? Well, I don't know what, uh, I, don't, I don't believe ICE has changed their enforcement posture or their activities in relationship to this pandemic. Uh, we don't communicate about that. Uh, we don't work with them, as you said, for those type of matters. Uh, so really, I, I'm really not in a position to, to, uh, to relay other than to say that uh, I believe at these times of crisis that uh, all of us are working towards the safety of an entire community. And I would just ask that uh, the entire community look to LAPD uh, without hesitation for any needs that they have. Yeah. Um, and this one is not a question. This is a comment from Valentina Toledo. She says, I don't have any questions. I just want to say thank you for all uh, of you and for being there and taking care of us. So that's nice to, to well, hear. Well, that's nice. But I would say that uh, to, to her, I, I accept that on behalf of 13,000 men and women that are really coming to work each day. They, they're making me uh, exceedingly proud because they're, they're showing that 
their professionalism, they're showing their commitment to the safety of all of Los Angeles, and I couldn't be prouder than be their chief. It's a tr tremendous privilege. Excellent. So we are here at the Emergency Operations Center. This is where uh, the city mobilizes, and this is where your home is here for the next uh, several weeks or months. Um, I thank you for this. We're going to do this again. I think this is a okay. good, good chance, so we'll, we'll keep doing this periodically. Appreciate it, Chief. Thank you.